Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave, it's Gem here and welcome to our Pan Pastel artwork video. As some of you know I am not a pastel artist so this is kind of just a bit of fun and see if I can produce something that looks remotely like an artwork. I want to thank you all for your comments on the last Pan Pastel video. You gave me some nice tips and hints and also some nice resources from fellow YouTubers to go and check out. I'm quite intrigued by this because I'm not sure that pastel is a medium that I'm a fan of and I think I need to do a little bit more exploring and actually create some artwork before I make my mind up. Just before we get started, the cave stash has been refreshed this morning so you can head over to eBay and have a look at the surplus items there if there's anything that you fancy, maybe an early Christmas present to yourselves. If you don't know how the cave stash works, you can check out the Colour Cave website where there is a description just detailing how we go about things and how it all sort of comes together. I've also added another couple of artworks to my Redbubble store so you can feel free to go and meander through that if you fancy something on a mug or a print. All the links for these things are down in the description for you to peruse at your leisure. So with all that out the road, let's get to top down view and we can get going. Okay guys, so today we are going to attempt two landscape pictures using our pan pastels and uh, just see if we can create something. <laughs> that's, about as, that's about as high as my expectations are getting today. Okay, in the grand tradition of being completely predictable, I'm going to start with what I know because I am a noob at this. So I have selected some of the paper that Joe sent me. If you didn't see Jo's comment in the previous pan pastel video, she did actually leave a comment to let me know that this is Dale or Rowney Murano paper, which is designed for pastel. So that was like a happy accident. <laughs> anyway, out of all the papers we tried, I like this one the best. So this is what I'm going with. I've picked the green one. I'm going to do some trees. And this is really just a warm up and to kind of start finding my feet with this. So the th first thing I'm kind of thinking about is I have to think in layers like I would with a watercolour painting. And it's kind of back to what they say in the catalogue about, uh, you know, thinking of it as a painting technique rather than a drawing technique. And a disclaimer, I have zero confidence in my abilities at this point. But you know me, I'm quite happy to push myself, see what comes out of it. And if it's something that I have fun with and I enjoy, I might take the time to learn a bit more about working with these pastels and actually, you know, learn some proper techniques. But I'm not really that excited about them. They are terribly messy and I've just dug my nail into one of them already. Great start. Got my sponges. I think sponges would be good for backgrounds. I have washed these ones and they have stained but they are, they're clean to the touch. Um, I had a look on the website and basically it's just warm water and a little bit of soap. Give them a, a rub and then give them a squish and leave them to dry. So yep, that's good. Part of my curiosity with this is, do we actually need all these tools or are they just incredibly gimmicky? And maybe take some white. Okay, so I haven't planned anything here. I'm just kind of going with my gut and flying by the seat of my pants, which is something that I seem to be doing more and more of as time goes on. This sponge seems to be better for backgrounds, but they, they kind of look like clouds. Now, I just want to pop a little bit of this down in the middle and I'm kind of going to leave some of the paper showing through as well. I feel as if you kind of like have to put the colour down first and then kind of work with it from there. I think I could have done with another like a mid-tone green here. Um, 
you know, I've only got this this really bright phthalo green, which is not it's not really tickling my fancy to be honest. Uh, and these other greens that I've got are, you know, they're considerably darker. So I'm just trying to um, mix them together, and that's that's the good thing about these; they do mix quite well together. I'm just trying to get some sort of background on the go here, and I am literally just making it up as I go along. This pointy tool seems to be my favourite, and I think it's because it's the closest thing I can get to a uh, like a. Uh, a paintbrush or a pencil, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sure. I do feel as if I'm painting, I have to say. And maybe I can stick in some trees here. Maybe some little pine tree type efforts. See, the tip of this is great for this. I will soften these out though because they are off in the distance, so we don't want them to be too in your face. Okay, see now I want to I want to smooth these out a little bit but I don't want them to like be obliterated and I think this is where the, the kind of skill part comes in. I'm just gonna try and dab at them and see what happens. Yeah there we go that's that's okay. I do need to get more a bit more definition in them though and that's easier said than done like it really is. This is hard. I am not nearly as frustrated right now as uh, I was with the watercolour situation the first time, so that's all something. That was a while ago now. Just doing my thing, chucking myself in. Does that look any more defined is my question. So I think I want to have some of this earthy brown down here. I'm thinking as well just from this first experience that I should be taping this down the way one would with a watercolour painting and give yourself a border. I'll do that with the next one, I think. <laughs> it looks like a five-year-old's finger paint. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, because I'm going to end up leaving fingerprints everywhere. And also the pastel's all going to smudge on the back of this as well. So, mm, good to know. I like this, some of this earthy colour as well. I don't want to... I don't want to mix this together too much, but at the same time, I kind of do. My question is, if I take some white now and really mash it into this paper, is that going to... Because see, really what I want to try and do is like put a rock in. But if I do that, is it just going to mix with what's underneath? Would I be better fixing this bottom layer first? So I'm going to try it. I can always erase it. You know, if I was to put like a stone type structure in here, and then maybe fill this in with a little bit of this black. And I'm not pressing hard because I don't want to blend it with what's in behind. Mm. Now there is a high chance that my stone will have some brown on it though. So now if I take some white, am I going to be able to highlight and mix that in for a grey colour? Aha! Yes I am. This is the kind of area where I would want some really sharp lines. And to be truthful, I think I'm going to have to go in with a pastel pencil. And really get some sharp, you know, like definition around that edge there. Okay, I think as far as backgrounds go, that's about as much as I want to do. Just because I haven't pinned this down and I'm not entirely confident in what's going on, I'm going to go and spray this with fixative and let it dry and I'll start working on another piece while this is drying off. Way, and we're off. Okay, so for this one I'm going to try a little beachy scene. And all I've done is stick in a horizon with this straight edge and it's just to give me a guideline. And now I'm going to start working on my sun. I'm quite keen to do this sunset. So I just want to spread this out a bit. And then take my yellow. Something that I'm finding with this straight away is, see at this very beginning point, it seems to give you like a false sense of confidence because you start something like this and you think, yeah, okay, that looks all right. And then you soon realise that you're in a world of pain because you don't actually know what you're doing. I've got to remember as well that I want a kind of orange tone, so I need to put down some yellow along here and then mix some red in with it. It's funny, I must have watched hundreds of sunsets and sunrises for that matter. This could be either or, I suppose. And I still struggle sometimes to think about things like the light because when I'm watching them, it's not something that I pay particular attention to. I'm just enjoying the sunset. It makes you kind of stop and think about the things that you are watching. <laughs> 
So I don't know whether we want to go into blue and purple, that might be a bit ambitious at this stage. I really want a mid-sized tool, like these are kind of too small and the sponges feel dead clumsy sometimes. Let's have a go with the pointy one, just to see how this goes. That looks quite red. It looks really red on the camera. It, it looks more pink and... I don't know again whether it's the colour of the paper as well though. Whether, you know, that's kind of adding to it. I do really like the texture of this paper and how the pan pastel feels on it though. This is it's nice. It's really nice. Blendy blendy. Blendy blendy. More blendy blendy. Can we blend this way please? Don't steal my orange. Just be red up there on your own. Disappear way up into the sky. And this is hard. I think I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to do it. Oh, instant regret. <laughs> what have I done? Oh, I think I might have just ruined a good sunset. Right, come on, Gem, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> right, blendy first, blendy, blendy. I'm kind of having that new artist panic when your drawing is at the ugly stage and you think that you've ruined it. That's kind of how I'm feeling just now and I'm trying to identify if that is actually the case or whether I am just completely incompetent and way, way, way out my depth with this. There is a really fine line between blending these and just like churning them into muck. I think I am treading that, that line right now. More blue down here. I apologise profusely to anybody who actually works in pastels and is sitting here cringing like crazy because I am making what we would say a complete arse of this. I'm not scared. This is how I learn. Like I learn by doing and I learn by making mistakes. I have always been that annoying person that won't take a telling from people and just wants to go and do things and if I make a mess of it then I've got no one to blame but myself. Again, I could really regret this but I think I'm kind of past the stage of caving to be honest. Apparently if you slap this down it's supposed to be opaque enough to cover up what's underneath. I don't want to risk killing it with the purple though. I feel like I need like a separate blending sponge. It's kind of hard to know when to stop as well with the, the whole like blending and joining things together. I'm finding that quite challenging. I suppose that would be something that you would that you would learn as you go along, like the more experienced you got. I'm like, I'm like scared to touch things. Like, is it like, am I doing too much? Okay, I'm going to use my cotton bud here and I'm just going to go in with some black. I'm just going to do it. And I'm only going to have this in a few select areas, I think. Maybe kind of build it up a bit more at the corners. So I've got this overwhelming urge just to like smoosh all this together like, and I don't know why that's just not the best idea. I just want like there to be bits of blue peeking through. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay I'm just gonna leave that like that I think. I'm just gonna cut my losses. <laughs> I'm gonna use this flat tool for this because I want it to be... Something like that. Now see this is okay, this is the part where it's okay to have the blue. I don't want there to be too much red in this, this is the thing. Because I think the red could be quite overpowering. So I'll maybe just have, well maybe we'll have some along that, that horizon line. I don't really like having to think about texture as much as this either. This is actually working much better for the water than it did for the sky. Okay, the last thing that I want to do here before I spray this one is grab a little bit of this. This is actually the pale yellow, it looks almost white on the camera. It's a lot more subtle on the actual paper. Right, I'm going to go and spray this one with fixative. Okay, so back over here, I want to stick a dirty great big tree trunk in. <laughs> My fixative has worked well, which is great. So I'm just going to go for it here. Oh, right in the middle, slightly off center. I think we'll go slightly off center. I might live to regret this one. We'll make it an interesting tree. It'll be fine. <laughs> she says, oh, no, 
We'll get some sort of roots coming down here. Maybe down past the front of a rock that doesn't look anything like a rock. I kind of grudge this because it's ruining my lovely pretty sky that <laughs> I've spent ages doing. Again, I think I would feel much more comfortable with pastel pencils for this part. Kind of defeats the purpose of this video, so I just want to get some like main branches in here. I think we'll maybe have another one here. And then maybe it can have a little baby friend here, like a sapling. I think I maybe want to put a little bit more in the trunk here. Oh no! What I need to do is just start adding in a bit of detail to the trees and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do it in the same layer. But I just feel like you're kind of fighting against it, although you can layer these over the top of each other. I just feel like it's a bit of a a bit of a battle and doing something like this this palette knife type thing feels really clumsy and i think definitely these finer details would be much better put in with a pastel pencil it's funny i always like it, when i'm out of my comfort zone i like instantly want to revert back to pencil because it's where i feel safe see i've totally screwed that up what am i going to do with that oh no oh no <laughs> okay We've got a lumpy bumpy trunk, it's fine. Lumpy bumpy, that falls into the same category as nobly bobbly before anybody asks. <laughs> I would really like to put a little bit of this yellow ochre on these trunks as well, but I don't, I think it's the wrong shade. All I can say is thank goodness for the pointy tool. <laughs> Give us some definition on these roots here and maybe a little bit up some of the the branches. At this juncture I'm still enjoying my clouds a lot more than the rest of this picture. Let's get some leaves on the go. I'm finding this to be a bit of a chore. I'm going to be truthful. See I think I'm going to have to go back to the pointy tool. This is like I'm turning into like a one trick pony here with my, with my pointy tool with my little gnome hats. No I'm not impressed with the uh, with this at all. It's just not giving me... I'll maybe try the side. I might get on better with the side. It's not giving me the precision or the the lay down that I expected. And I know we have to build this up in layers, but I'm just not... I'm just not feeling this at all. It's just giving me like little splodges. Right, I've made the executive decision. I am going to put in some fine details with my pastel pencils. That is happening. It's like a mummy tree and a baby tree. Once again, I'm back to this situation where I don't have enough room in my desk for everything. Doing this kind of thing takes up so much space. Okay, first of all, Get a bit of definition on my rock here. See, having this nice sharp point as well, it's just, oh, it's lovely. I'm, I'm like instantly happier right now. <laughs> I really am. I have no idea what kind of tree this is. I'm just making it up as I go along. It's an imaginary pan pastel tree, okay? Let us zoom in a little bit and let you see this now. Um, this is an interesting experiment for sure. Regrets, lots, <laughs> lots and lots. But there we go, that is a, a finished picture nonetheless. Okay, I could go back in here and do like a million things. Like if I want to like add in more grass here in different colours with my pastel pencils. I do think that if you took a lot of time and built up your skills you could have some really really nice artwork for someone that's a noob like me this is this was really hard work i'm not gonna lie this has taken me hours i suppose realistically it's the same with any medium you do have to put some effort and some work into it i'm just not sure that i'm prepared to invest the time the mess and the money because these are super expensive into building this up into something you know a bit more of a regular habit anyway let's switch back to the other picture and see if we can get it finished there's only actually two things that i want to do i want to put like a helps for the shot i want to put a palm tree in the middle 
uh, like a silhouette kind of thing and I just want to add in some clouds as well so I think I'll use one of these rounded ones and I may have to build this up because these colours are quite dark and I can't like smear into this so I'm gonna have to rely on building up some layers perhaps now see that instantly I just feel as if I've ruined this like I really do I have to keep telling myself that it's all very fixable and not to get too panicked too early on because everything's going to be okay. Now even though I have sprayed this with fixative it is picking up the purple if you can see that right on the tip there but there is purple there. Pack with the pencil. Now interestingly this isn't going down over the over the pan pastel that means I'm gonna to have to fix it and go on top of it we're gonna get busy with this black and yes I am scared of this also nothing ventured nothing gained pop that up round there I don't want to take away too much from the original color of the paper though because it is such a lovely color and it was part of the reason why I wanted to use it so I could have that there as sand I see for a silhouette you do want really sort of crisp lines and I just feel like I'm not gonna be able to achieve that with these sponges even if I use the side of this pointy tool how much am I going to be able to actually get that precision and again I don't know whether it's practice or whether you need certain tools to do it okay that's that's a reasonably crisp, crisp line along at this left hand side I just need to be more confident in my strokes here that's what's like I'm kind of pussyfooting about it a little bit I'm not pressing down in to get that line there we go right okay so this is the hard bit we have to decide once again it's that moment it's like a Bob Ross moment where you decide what part of your image that you're going to ruin <laughs> Now there are lots of different varieties of palm trees and I learned a bit about them when I was last um, abroad, which was when I was in Mauritius. I think I kind of want to... Ooh, it's the regret again. This is like the worst idea ever. <laughs> okay, that's done what I wanted it to do, which is great. I think this might even just be one palm tree. I don't think I can cope with the excitement of putting in more than one palm tree. <laughs> Oh, what is happening to me? I'm trying not to touch any of the other dust floating about because obviously with this being black, if I smudge it in, then that causes me an issue. I can build some of this up in layers as well. One of the things that I'm finding strangest about this, which obviously is not an issue you have with painting or with pencils, is it's the hand movements. It's knowing when to rub a little bit and knowing when to just dab. And I think that takes a fair bit of gauging. Now, these are going to have to be big confident strokes all in one go, and I am not looking forward to this bit. <sighs> that was a better one. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Come on, Jem. Can do this one more oh right let's try with this one oh this is all going horribly wrong what happened i was getting such nice lines there okay guys that's about all the excitement i can handle for this picture <laughs> like seriously that's it's like way too much for me and there we go i think i'm done and there we have it, ladies and gents. Here are my two finished pan pastel pictures with a tiny bit of pastel pencil. Which one's your favourite? Let me know. If you have any thoughts or comments, please feel free to leave them down below as always. And normally at this point in the video I'll say I had great fun doing this. I did not have great fun doing this. I find this very stressful, uh, very messy and slightly awkward as well. Whether or not I choose to continue to use this regularly um, as a medium remains to be seen, but I do think that I will have to have another attempt and perhaps try and draw something like an animal portrait and see how I get on with them that way and maybe have a mess about with them in between times and definitely go and watch some technique videos and some other YouTubers using them, maybe pick up a few handy hints and tips. Anyway, I want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed watching me stress my way through this. And we shall see you back in the cave really soon for another video. Bye for now, everyone.